Come to your people, people and set, set them free. Oh, my mighty God, to, to you all hearts are open, open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your own holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you created us in your name. Grant us grace to contend fairly for you against evil and to make no peace with oppression. Help us, like those of generations before us, resist evil but slavery and human bondage in any form and any manner of oppression. Help us to use our freedoms to bring justice among people and nations everywhere to the glory of our whole world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. I held out my hands all day long firmly to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices, a people who provoke me to my face continually sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sit inside tombs in such a night secret places, who eat swine's flesh with broth of abominable things in their vessels. We say, keep to yourself. Do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me. I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their laps, their inequities and their ancestors' impurities together, says the Lord. Because they offered incense on the mountains and reviled me on the hills, I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions, thus says the Lord. As the wine is found in the cluster, and they say, Do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it. So I will do for my servant's sake, and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, inheritors of my mountains. My chosen shall inherit, and my servant shall settle there. The word of the Lord. <laughs> Let us read it for you. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword. My life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. And my wretched body from the horns of wild wolves. I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the congregation of all creation. Praise the Lord. Oh, of Oh, of the Lord. Oh, the Lord. Oh, the Lord. Oh, the Lord. the Lord. Oh, of him in the Lord. Oh, the Lord. the I will perform my vows as princesses for those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live with her life. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For he belongs to the Lord. He rules all the nations. Reading from the Galatians. Now, before faith came, we were in prison and guarded under the law until the faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinary until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now the faith has come, we are no longer subject to the 
this is from the head. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Jesus Christ. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Word to prayer. Thank you, Thank you to God. God. <clears throat> Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, the man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time, he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, what have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it, it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swineherds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. And then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got in the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So we went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, and open the ears of our heart to hear the word that you have for each one of us to hear. Amen. So I'm so delighted to have Anna and Zane with us here uh, in the sanctuary in the summer 
we don't do Sunday school, so we invite our kids to join us. And as I saw Anna this morning, it reminded me of the wisdom that we so often get from children. And I remember one of our nieces saying, one of my nieces saying to me about a little boy that was in her class. Um, it was at the beginning of the school year and she was telling us about how she made friends with him because he didn't have any friends. And I asked her why not? And she said, because everybody in our class thinks he's the same person he was last year. And I guess he used to, you know, hit people and stuff, but she didn't freeze him there. You know, she knew that he had grown and stretched and he was a different person this school year. And I just want you to keep that in mind as we look at today's gospel. Too often, people today, I think, are too quick to cast the Bible aside because of stories like this one, stories about casting out demons that on the surface might seem like primitive nonsense. It's sad because they miss out on thousands of years of accumulated ancient wisdom that transcends time and place and culture. My job as a preacher is to preach the gospel in this time and in this place and in this culture. These stories, this wisdom stand the test of time, even as our language and our understanding of various conditions changes. Ultimately, the Bible, all of these sacred scriptures, tell a story about our ever evolving, changing, and understanding of God and about liberation and freedom. Whether it's liberation from slavery in Egypt or liberation from our own self-destructive desires and tendencies. So what people referred to as demonic possession in the first century, we might call by a different name today. It might be an untreated mental illness, an addiction, or some other destructive habits. Think of how much anger consumes us, how much envy devours us. There are a variety of different conditions we know today that would fall under the first century understanding of demonic possession. But if you think about it, even today, we still use that same language. We'll say she's wrestling with some demons, right? So even today, we kind of have a sense of that. Now, typically, the demons that Jesus confronts have three things in common. And the first is they cause self-destructive behavior in the person. And the person feels trapped or helpless in that condition. And these demons separate the person from normal living in their family and in their community. Does that sound familiar? Don't many of us summer suffer from many of these same things? Note the similarities between this demon-possessed man and the demons that can possess us. He was totally cut off from family and society. He didn't live as people, but he lived in the tombs. In other words, he was already in a living death, separated from normal people, separated from normal living. 
I feel like I see these people all around us when I'm walking in the city in the tenderloin, when I'm getting off the exit ramp over there by Costco on Woodside Road in 101. I once found a man in the yard there between Costco and that Burger King passed out with his pants down around his ankles. These demons harm the person. They are death dealing, they are destructive forces. And we know these forces. We know when we are engaging in behaviors that are not good for us. All right, Zane, Anna, cover your ears. When I smoked, which was really bad, I knew it wasn't good for me. And slowly I got pushed out from my family. There was no smoking in the house. I was hanging out by myself after Thanksgiving dinner. And slowly I was pushed out of all the buildings and public places. I got pushed out. And then I wonder about our addictions, not only individually, but as a society, our addictions to guns, to our notion of individual rights to bear arms or our beholdenness to a certain interpretation of our constitution. Is this not killing us? I was reading about the Episcopal priest who started AA. And he said that the point of this particular story is that the power of God can cast out demons, even when we cannot. And the key to the success of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, and whose 12 steps to healing begin with these three. He wrote, we admitted we were powerless over our addiction, that our lives had become unmanageable. And two, we, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. And three, we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood God. So members of AA realize that not only do they need God's help, but the support of people around them. And in almost all of the stories of Jesus healing, there is restoration to family and to communities. For the healing of the demons of today, the fellowship of family, congregation, and community is key to restoration. Becoming free from our own demons is seldom, seldom a do-it-yourself project. We need help. We need God's help and we need the help of other people. And all of that is happening in this ancient story. The encounter with God sets this man free. He's no longer confined to the outskirts of the community, confined to the tombs, to the grassy knolls and our exits off the highway. He's no longer forced into isolation, but he's brought back into the fold. Through his encounter with God, with Jesus, he's brought from this from this place of death and despair into community, into the life of God's people. He wants to go off with Jesus, but Jesus says, no, return to your community. So I wonder, I wonder if all of us don't have some demon, so to speak, that is keeping us from living our best life, that is keeping us from living freely and fully. God, Jesus, is all about our freedom from all things and in all things. 
freedom from slavery, from slavery from Egypt, freedom from slavery in our own country as we celebrate tomorrow, Juneteenth, freedom from our addiction to guns. So we had yet another mass shooting at an Episcopal church in Alabama over the weekend. You see, these ancient stories aren't outdated. They aren't outdated stories that have no relation to us. They continue to relate to us because the condition is universal. It transcends time and place and culture. And when we really truly have an encounter with the living God, those things which torment us, those things which keep us shackled, fall away. At the end of today's story, the man is not only delivered from the demon and not only cured of whatever terrible burden it was that he was carrying, but he is healed. And healed comes from this Greek word sozo, which also can mean saved, delivered, made whole. In Latin, the word, word is salvus, meaning health, which is to say that our salvation, the way we get saved is social. The whole point of God's healing liberation is social. It's to restore us to community and to recall us back to life. Amen. And now, please stand if you feel comfortable, and let us recite the words of the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Ruthian, would you read the intercessions for us? We offer prayers for ourselves and the world, that those entrusted with authority in our nation may support the changes needed in order to exercise leadership and promote healing in an authentic, responsible, and a peaceful manner. And we pray. May we accept the call to the heirs of peace. 
that our communities, our schools, supermarkets, churches, and centers may find ways to actively participate in efforts to eliminate violence, especially violence against Black and Brown people, so that this country may take the lead in fostering conditions for healing racial divisions. And we pray they would accept the call to be heirs of peace. That all who gather this week to remember Juneteenth be able to freely and peaceably and in celebration with us remember it together and be pray. May, May we accept the call to be heirs of peace. That you will help us to seek renewal of ourselves in this new liturgical season. Let your Holy Spirit challenge us to new goals and achievements in our spiritual lives so that we may become the person you have intended us to be. And we pray. May, may we accept the call to the heirs of peace. Love of God, you house the homeless, you feed the hungry, you feed the captives, and you heal the sick. That you may make our hands your hands in service to strangers and friends. May, may we accept the call to the heirs of peace. We pray for all those who are mourning the sweet family, the Falconer family, and for all the families who have lost loved ones to, get, to gun violence. Most recently in a church in Alabama, a school in Texas, and a supermarket in New York. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for those needing healing, Grandma Kathy, Sue Phillips, Robert, Steve Millard, Tom Wall, Matthew, Amy Tribble, and those we now name silently or aloud. For Tony. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Everlasting God, you bless us with a cloud of your witnesses. With gratitude, we recall the lives and deeds of those who have gone before us, in particular. Danny Knight, Susie King, Don Sweet, Judy Carpenter, Mona Hadley, Peter Dupont, Pat Schmidt, Frank Cowan, Ursula Sorger, Baha Clark, Lois Gardner, and those we name either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now lift to you the concerns of our own hearts. Hear silently, Lord, aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh Lord, for change. Jesus, you revealed God through your wise words and loving deeds. And we encounter you still today in the faces of those whose society is pushed to the margin. Guide us through the love you revealed to establish the justice you proclaimed that all peoples might dwell in harmony and peace, united by that one love that binds us to each other and to you. And most of all, Lord, change our routine worship and work into into genuine encounter with you and our better selves so that our lives will be changed for the good of all. Amen. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and one another. Almighty God, source of all that is, giver of every good gift, you create all people in your image and call us to love one another as we love us. We confess that we are here to honor you in the great diversity of the human family. We have desired to live in freedom while building walls between ourselves and others. We have longed to be known and accepted for who we are while making judgments of others based on color skin or the shape of features or the varieties of human experience. We have tried to love our neighbors individually while yet benefiting from systems that hold the same neighbors in 
Forgive us, holy God. Give us eyes to see as you reveal the revealed in all people. Strengthen us for the work of reconciliation rooted in love. Restore us in your image to be a beloved community, united in our diversity, even as you are one with Christ and Spirit, holy and undivided Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Oh, <laughs> 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 Today, we are assembling 100 snack bags for uh, kids at a homeless, uh, a homeless kids' camp that's being run by Life Moves. And uh, we really need your help. All you have to do is you know, throw a few things in a bag, and there will be a child somewhere that will be receiving that uh, this week. Um, if anyone is able to um, sing or read um, at 1.30, uh, we will be going over to Silver Oaks uh, Memory Care Unit. To, uh, to work with um, otherwise forgotten seniors. And um, so if you have a, if you want to participate in that, uh, talk to Penny McCullough or um, Angela Hay, and they can tell you all about it after the service. But it's 1.30, it's about half an hour of your time, and it's, it's important. Um, we will be making, by the way, these, these snack bags all for the next seven weeks. So if you can't stay today, but you can stay another Sunday, um, just, Feel free. Um, other things that we're going to be doing coming up, um, we have a, 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 a drive for um, homeless kids for backpacks. And so we're going to be making backpacks for uh, third to fifth graders through Life Moves. And then also um, we're looking for donations of 20 backpacks for, um, for college students, uh, most of whom just aged out of the foster care system. And so we really could use a, a little bit of a hand there. And for those of you who have um, are around in September, um, we will be making 10,000 meals for the needy worldwide. Um, and we're gonna be doing that in two hours. So we do ask that you register now and uh, talk to every friend you have because that's what we're gonna need in order to make this work. Thank you. Do you need the backpacks? Yes, we need Um, we're looking for new, not used backpacks. And we have a ton of birthdays today. Uh, we have Rachel Bright, Ward Payne, and I saw Mary Payne on the line a little bit ago. Amika Crawford and John Lippa, and a ton of anniversaries as it is the month of June. Bill Lack, Stephen and Liz Flatterman. Greg and Rosemary Hens, Chuck and Barbara Harwood, Steve and Linda Millard. And as some of you may know, Chuck Harwood and Steve Millard are ill. So if you think about maybe sending a card, I'm sure that would be greatly appreciated. So we bless all these birthdays and all of these anniversaries. 
Any other announcements? All right, well, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God. to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. And so we join the saints and angels in proclaiming your glory as we sing. salvation through Christ. When we, were lo when we lost our way, you called us back to yourself and gave your son to share our human nature. In him, you have made us a holy people by sending upon us your holy and life-giving spirit. On the night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
After supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering now the suffering and death and proclaiming the resurrection and ascension of Jesus, our Redeemer, we bring you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And in the last days, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia.
of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you to be on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Please stand if you feel comfortable and let us pray the first communion prayer found on page 14. Let us pray. Let me offer We give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Send us forth the people, forgive and heal and renew, that we may proclaim your love to the world. May God, the Father, and us all grant you grace to discover God's purpose for you and the courage to live it from the depths of your being. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Giver of life be with you and all those we love now and forever. Amen. Thank you.